The reason I get fly is I've been Jasper. I even keep your picture in my passport. Love, love. Black Wall Street was one of the most prosperous black communities in the U.S. in the early 20th century. It was the site of the Tulsa Race Massacre, which has been called the single worst incident of racial violence in American history. Mobs of white Tulsans killed black Tulsans, looted and robbed the black community, and burned down homes and businesses. 16 hours of rioting ended only when the National Guardsmen were brought in by the governor. An estimated 10,000 black people were left homeless as 35 city blocks composed of 1,256 residences were destroyed by fire. The John Hope Franklin Reconciliation Park is the long-awaited result of the 2001 Oklahoma Commission to study the Tulsa race riot of 1921. It memorializes the riot and tells the story of African Americans' role in the building of Oklahoma and begins the long delayed rendering of the full account of Oklahoma history. The park features two primary art elements created by Ed Dwight the first African-American astronaut, the Hope Plaza, and the Tower of Reconciliation. The Hope Plaza contains three bronze sculptures representing actual pictures from the 1921 riot. Hope, the white director of the Red Cross holding a black baby. Humiliation, a black man with his hands raised in surrender. Hostility, a white man fully armed for assault. The Tower of Reconciliation depicts the history of the African American struggle from Africa to America. From the migration of the slaves with Native Americans on the Trail of Tears, the slave labor experience in the territories, the first Kansas colored volunteer infantry that won the Battle of Honey Springs to statehood, the immigration of free blacks into Oklahoma, and the all black towns in Greenwood. We have been here for more than 400 years. We have been called many things. Africans called natives, citizens of the five civilized tribes, and slaves. In the 16th century, we walked alongside the Spanish as they searched for the lost cities of gold. In 1719, we accompanied the French up the Arkansas River, bringing trade goods to the Osage and Wichita. When the Americans came, we were among them. We rode with Thomas Nuttall in 1819 and with Major Long in 1820. When Washington Irving visited in 1832, we were already here to meet him. We were scouts and interpreters, explorers and runaways, women and men, infants and children, slaves and free. We sat down beside the campfires of the Cadado and the Pawnee, drank the pure waters of the creeks and rivers, and felt the prairie wind in our faces. 
With Africa in our blood, we built new lives in the land of the blackjack and the tall grass, the eagle and the buffalo, the wankata and the skies that never end. We have been here for centuries. We are Oklahomans before there was an Oklahoma. On the following day, wild and sudden gusts of wind on the river were making our advance dangerous. After persevering till about noon, we paddled to the left shore of a thriving Cherokee settlement. None of the family spoke either French or English, with the exception of a Negro slave girl who acted as our interpreter. Charles Joseph Latrobe, English explorer, the Rambler in North America, 1836. The Trail of Tears was our trail too. From North Carolina and Tennessee, Alabama and Georgia, Mississippi and Florida, we came walking a thousand miles through summer heat and winter wind, Cherokee Creek, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Seminole, brothers and sisters, slave and free. Many of us fought slavery in every way possible. When they told us we must not learn to read, we stole books and newspapers and learned anyway. We ran away when we could, hiding in the woods and river bottoms, and held secret prayer meetings when we could. And in 1842, near Weber's Falls, we launched one of the largest slave revolts in all of American history. The white man's civil war was also a civil war within the Indian nations. When war came, slave and slaveholders chose sides, pitting brother against brother. The Union victories at Honey Springs and Cabin Creek in July of 1863 led to the enforcement of the Cherokee Emancipation Proclamation, freeing slaves long before the December 1865 ratification of the 13th Amendment. When freedom finally came, it came not as a gift. We had freed ourselves. It was said of the troops, which were to become the 79th and 83rd U.S. Colored Infantry, both slave and slaveholder, they fought like veterans and preserved their line unbroken throughout the engagement. Their coolness and bravery I have never seen surpassed. They were in the hottest of the fight and opposed Texas troops twice their number, whom they completely rooted. Major General James G. Blunt. Union Army, Battle of Honey Springs, July 1863. Thank you for joining us on this journey to remember the lives lost on Black Wall Street.